Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Today, I'm going to talk about a combat mindset. Um, as I traveled, as I went to these different places, I tried to pick up everything I could. What's that scripture? See, you know, I don't never, I just, that, is that what it is? Yeah. The book of Sirach, chapter 34 and verse 11. Yeah. When I traveled. When I traveled, yep. I saw many things. Yep. And I understand more than I can express. Mm -hmm. I Go was. Ahead. Go ahead. I was oft times in danger of death. Mm. Yet I was delivered because of these things. So, you know, when I traveled, I saw, I saw a lot of, lot of different things, man. It's different out there, man. They walk around with straps. They strapped up out there. I was, uh, we was at one uh, camp, and the dude right by, they tried to, you know, hand him a flyer. And as he go to hand him the flyer, the dude waved back. He like, I'm good. But he just waved his hand. He had a nine in his hand as he was waving. I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, like a Glock in his hand. As he was waving, I'm good. I don't want the fly. I was like, this is crazy. That's how they do out there in the South, man. In the Bible belt. You know what I'm saying? They got the Bible in their belt and another thing in their belt. You know what I'm saying? That's how they rock out there. But, um, you know, I, I picked up, I did my best to pick up a few things. Uh, a little bit of danger, nothing crazy. But, you know, I saw some stuff like that. So I want to talk about uh, a combat mindset and what I was able to learn going to these different places. Let's start with this. First Peter's chapter 5 and verse 8. It's Day of Atonement, right? It's Day of Atonement. So we're talking about really having your mind ready for combat. That's all types of combat, as you'll see. You got physical combat, mental you know, combat, uh, spiritual combat. You got all these different combats that you got to deal with. So I'm going to do my best to kind of Make sure we get a little bit of everything uh, when we're dealing with the combat, physically, spiritually, and mentally. All right, let's go. The book of First Peter, chapter 5 and verse 8. Yeah. Be sober. Be vigilant. Mm. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So read that one more time. The book of First Peter, chapter 5 and verse 8. Yeah. Be sober. Be vigilant. So be vigilant. That's what we have to do. We have to learn how to be vigilant. A lot of times when I, when I do my classes, I'm always trying to think of what type of specific instruction I could give. Like, I never want to just teach a class and it's just kind of generic. I want to kind of leave you with some specific instructions. So, Israel, we got to be vigilant. We got to be vigilant. And you're going to get maybe the, I guess, the, the crux of this right here. I'm going to say it to you right now, what I'm really trying to say. Let's go to 2 second, second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, because I, I just always want to make sure it's no confusion on the point I'm trying to make. Give me that. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. Yeah. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, meaning... That the way we're going to take the kingdom is not going to be through physical violence. Now, in the Negro's mind, that means I do not need to protect myself at all. They, they'll be like, I don't, I don't need no form. God got me. And I'm not saying God don't got you. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that when the pandemic happened, all of y'all ran out and bought toilet paper. You know what I'm saying? When these different things are happening, y'all running out buying rice and beans and stuff. So, why you don't say at that point, God got me? He gonna rain down quail from heaven. 
You run to the store and get you some, 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 you know, supplies to make sure you're good. Let's go to this scripture. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 31. Like I said, I'm going to give you the crux of what the class is mainly talking about here at the beginning. So it's no confusion on what I'm saying when I'm talking about a combat mindset. I'm not telling you to go out and shoot people. I'm not telling you. To, no, that's not what I'm telling you. Proverbs 21 and verse 31. Uh, yes. The book of Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 31. Yeah. The horse is prepared against the day of battle. Mm. But safety is of the Lord. So read that scripture one more time. I want that to really like sink into what we just said. Now, we just read a scripture that said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, meaning this is not how we're going to take the kingdom. This is not how we're going to rule the nations. Us getting a bunch of guns and strapping up is not going to help us to overthrow America and the United States government. That's not, that's not going to happen. But what I am saying is this. Read that scripture one more time. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21 and verse 31. Yeah. The horse is prepared against the day of battle. The horse is prepared for the day of battle. You see that? You still got to be prepared. It ain't saying we got to go out here and shoot up everybody. But it is saying you have to be prepared to make sure you can protect yourself, protect your family, protect your household. See, in the Negro's mind, they think it's just one way. Just one, it's just all this way. All get guns and just everybody go fight, or we just walk around just, you know, with no way to protect ourselves. It's a balance. It's a balance in that thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's go back to first Peter's five and eight again. So like I said, I was going to give you kind of the crux of what I'm saying at the beginning because I don't want nobody to be confused. Like, cap zaps it. We all got to go get ARs this week, get strapped up. That's what the whole class about. No, that's not what I'm saying. Read that thing again. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 5 and verse 8. Yeah. Be sober. Uh -huh. Be vigilant. Be vigilant. We got to be vigilant. We got to be prepared for whatever may come. Be sober and be vigilant. Go ahead. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So the adversary is trying to figure out who he can devour. And so our adversaries have many different ways for us to be defeated. So we have to have the combat mindset into whatever challenges we move it into. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it might be. What's that? Oh, you want the definition of vigilant. Okay, let's do it. Go ahead, Anna. Help me out. Yeah, let's get the definition of vigilant because vigilant. it's not a word that we normally use. Mm -mm. So that we shouldn't let words just breeze by us when we read the scriptures. Let me know what you got. Vigilant. They use words like vigilante. You know what I'm saying? See? Which is not what we're talking about. Not what we're talking about, but I'm just saying. <clears throat> Go ahead. Vigilant. Uh, one, keenly watchful to detect danger. Mm. Wary. A vigilant sentry. Uh, two, ever awake and alert. Mm. Sleepless, sleepless. Sleepless. Sleeplessly watchful. Sleeplessly watch it, watchful. Watchful. Go ahead, sir. No, so the, w the key word I'm looking at up there is watchful the mm. key words is and wary mm -hmm. be aware of your surroundings be aware of what's going on around you yep you know don't be blind and not a vigilante yeah you know but you gotta but that's what i'm saying going back to having the combat mindset what that means is right you you are prepared for threats right you have to be prepared for threats that's what having the combat mindset is all about got to be prepared for threats. You also have to make calm decisions in the midst of chaos. Well, how do you make calm decisions in the midst of chaos if you don't prepare yourself? You can't. You can't, pre you can't make calm decisions if you don't practice making those decisions. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of us, when we was kids, play sports, right? I'm going to give you a get a liar a parable. You know what I'm saying? Somebody phone ringing. Uh, I'm going to give you a get a liar parable. You know what I'm saying? He know what I'm talking about. Uh... But you know how you out there, you playing ball, right? And you playing and you think, five, 
four, three, two, one. Then you throw up the shot. You know what I'm saying? At the end. So you, what you're trying to do is you're trying to prepare yourself for if you ever in those spots. You're thinking about that. You know what I'm saying? But we never really prepare ourselves for anything in, in, in general. Like, we don't. We don't. Until it's last minute, then everybody want to run out and try to get this and try to get that. We got to be prepared ahead of time. I always think back to, to, to the book of Tobit. You know what I'm saying? He told his son, be prepared. He knows that um, Nineveh is going to be destroyed. He knew that. So the Bible tells you, hey, America is going to be destroyed. So if it's telling you that, what should you do in order to be prepared for that coming, for that, for that, um, for that day? All right, let's go to uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 6. Let's look at Christ. Be vigilant. The book of Acts, chapter 1 and verse 6. Yeah. When they, therefore, were come together, mm -hmm. they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time res restore again the kingdom to Israel? So that our people, right, the, the disciples at this time, they wanted to figure out, was the Lord about to go into battle? He said, is it what they're asking? Is it wartime? Are we about to go and restore the kingdom? Restoring the kingdom ain't just because it ain't just going to float into our hands. Like, we're going to have to go in there and take that thing. You know what I'm saying? Christ is going to lead that charge. You know what I'm saying? But we have to be prepared for the battle. That's what the scriptures say. You got to be prepared. You got to be prepared. Uh, let's go to this. Judges chapter 2 and verse 8. 21 the book of judges chapter 2 verse 21 i want that first article of bellamy bellamy that i sent you should be the first thing everything should pretty much be in order read this uh scripture judges 2 21 the book of judges chapter 2 and verse 21 yeah i also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. So the Lord is telling the children of Israel, like, look, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna drive out these nations for y'all. These people that's around you, I'm not gonna move them out the way. Why? Come on. That through them I may provide I may I, what? I may prove Israel. So read that again. That through them I may prove Israel. Uh-huh. Whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein uh -huh. as their fathers did keep it or not. So these nations are left here to prove whether we're going to keep the laws or not. That's one of the parts of this combat that we're in. This is part of the battle. All right, give me one more scripture. Give me one more. Give me a 2 Ezra 5, I mean 7 and 57. 2 Ezra 7 and 57. We're coming back to Judges. I just, I want this one too. The book of 2 Ezra chapter 7 and verse 57. Yeah. Then answered he me and said, this is the condition of the battle, mm. which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. So every man that's born on the earth, you're in a fight. This is a battle that we in. You got to have a combat mindset when you're going into a battle. All right, let's get that. Let's get Bellamy. Bring that up for me. Bring that up. Let me see. Okay, so it says uh, X. NFL, I mean, I'm sorry, ex-New York Jets wide receiver Josh Bellamy charged in $24 million coronavirus relief loan scheme. So a lot of people don't know, right? A lot of times they put these things out here for us to see if you going to bite, to see if you're going to perjure yourself in some way to where you are now uh, what's the word? Um, I don't know. Let's, let's just see what he did. Let's see. All right. So it says former New York Jets wide receiver Josh Bellamy was arrested for his alleged role in a $24 million scheme to receive illegal loans intended for coronavirus relief. The U.S. Justice Department announced Thursday. So the U.S. De Department of Justice was investigating this. They are paying attention to how you spend this coronavirus relief money. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times people think that, oh, they're just giving away free money, not knowing this is part of the battle. They are putting these things out here to see 
if you're going to do the right thing or not. It's something called integrity. I talk to my son about it. I try to talk to him about it almost every day if I can. Integrity. It's doing the right thing regardless if nobody is looking. So is he doing the right thing with this? That, let's go back to Judges. Read that scripture again. Judges chapter 2, verse 22. Watch this thing. The book of Judges chapter 2 and verse 21 or 22. 22. Uh-huh. That through them. Through I the may, other nations. I may prove Israel. Uh-huh. Whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein uh -huh. as their fathers did keep it or not. So whether they're going to keep the laws or not. Go back to the article. All right. So it says uh, Bellamy 31 was charged uh, in a federal criminal complaint with fraud, bank fraud, and conspiracy to commit wire fraud and bank fraud. He allegedly received more than $1.2 million in paycheck uh in Paycheck Protection Program loans for his company, Drip Entertainment. This is for Drip. You know what I'm saying? For Drip Entertainment, LLC, according to the Justice Department. Bellamy, so he's he telling them, I got a company. I got Drip Entertainment. Entertainment. I got to pay my people. That's what he's telling them. Now, let's see what the Negro does with the money. Let's see. Bellamy, uh, recovering from shoulder injury, released Tuesday, just physically unable to perform list. Or Jason wasn't aware of the rest at the time of the release. Scroll on down. Scroll on down. He was arrested Thursday in Florida. Uh, scheduled to appear later before U.S. Magistrate Middle District. Uh, okay, here we go. According to the Justice Department, Bellamy spent more than 62000 in loan money at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Florida. He was out there shaking dice <laughs> with the money. That's not paying your people that work for Drip Entertainment. What about the people that work for Drip Entertainment? What about them? He's supposed to be paying them. And <laughs> say, what else did he do? Uh, he also is accused of using more than 104000 for luxury goods, including purchases at Dior, Gucci, and various jewelers in addition to withdrawing more than $302,000. Go ahead, Ananias. Hey, man, you got to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe <laughs> they were service awards for his employees, you know? He was giving drip entertainment some drip. Uh, well, yeah. He was, <laughs> he was giving them some him. drip. He was dripping on them. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I'm reading this, and you know how the world does it. They're going to focus on the so-called black man. Yeah. But I guarantee you, he ain't the only one doing this. He not. They getting all type of Negroes with this stuff, yeah. though. That's the point I'm making. This is just one that's, that they publicize. But all type of black people, like, oh, man, they got that PPP loan. I'm going to go file for it and try to get some of this money. Then the next thing they know, they hemmed up. Yeah. Yep. Not knowing that they that what they doing is they letting down their guard. They they. They, they going into what you call complacency when you're dealing with a combat mindset, right? You can be complacent, not being vigilant, that your enemy is actively trying to destroy you. That's what they are trying to do. You thinking, they like, oh, let me just, you know, give them some money or something and pay it. No, they are paying attention so they can destroy you. Let's go back to Judges. Watch. Judges 2. The book of Judges, chapter 2 and verse 22. Start at 21 this time. Verse 21. Yeah. I will also I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. So he said he's not gonna drive these nations out. Why? That through them I may prove Israel mm -hmm. whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein, as their fathers did keep it or not. So whether they're gonna fraud or defraud one another or not. You know what I'm saying? Because what, what you got to do when you filling out this loan stuff, you got to write down how many employees you got and different stuff you got going on. It ain't like they just giving you the money. So he got all his money and he didn't pay none of the people that he claimed that he had the money for. That's fraud. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't know. What, what, what commandment is that specifically? Stealing. Oh, there you go. Thou shalt not steal, brother. Stealing. Go ahead. Especially if he wrote out why he was getting, why he wanted the grant or the loan, <laughs> exactly. and then went and went to the casino. You a thief, bro. <laughs> a thief. Hey, let me hold a hundred so I could go pay my bill. And then I'm downtown with it at the pizza joint, and you walk by me, you stole it. You stole it. You lied to me in order to get it. Come on, read that thing. Read twenty three. Verse twenty three. 
Therefore, the Lord left those nations mm -hmm. without driving them out hastily. Neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. So he left those nations there to see what we was going to do. This is part of the condition of the battle. We got to understand. This is an actual fight you in. Let's go to the next one. Give me, a, give me a, the trucks. This one is a little bit older. This one might be about two years old. But this came to my mind when I was reading about the PPP. I said, this is the same thing, just on a larger scale. Now they're going to get the business-minded Negroes. You know what I'm saying? All right, it says, viral videos show bait trucks used by police in Chicago to lure potential thieves. They trying to catch more people stealing. This is the type of stuff they was doing to us. The Facebook video shot last week by the community activist Charles McKenzie show a white, uh, I don't know, truck parked in a largely black Inglewood neighborhood. The police parked the truck with boxes of Nike shoes in front of kids and, with peop and when people hop in the truck, the police hopping out of them, McKenzie wrote in the Facebook. So they were setting our people up. So they said, we're going to figure out how to get the high-level criminals and the low-level criminals. But it's all part of the combat. We got to be vigilant. Know that our enemy, read that scripture again. Go back to 1 Peter 5, verse 8, man. The Lord told us this thing, but we think, oh, it's just talking about uh, floating ghosts floating around and it's trying to trick me into, I don't know. That's what our people think, man. Read that scripture. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 5 and verse 8. Yeah. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be vigilant. You got to be vigilant. You got to know he's trying to set you up, man. Your enemy is the so-called Caucasian Edomite white people. They are trying to set you up. And if you are not vigilant, this is the type of stuff that's going to happen to you. It's a trap. The thing was called a trap truck. That was the whole name of it. Go ahead. Put that back up there, please. I'm just reading this. <laughs> The trap trucks, man. It says, it says the police parked the truck with boxes of Nike shoes <laughs> in front of kids. Yep. And when the people hopped in the truck, the people hopping out. The police. The, oh, I'm sorry. The police hopping out on them. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Gather yeah, yeah, your thoughts, I don't sir. even know what to say, man. Yeah, I'm just saying our, our people are just... They're not vigilant. They, they, uh, they're not okay, vigilant. that's a very nice word for it <laughs> because I'm thinking dumb. They because I'm like, <laughs> if you see a truck park in front of you with a Nike with an open door Nike trucks, and you're gonna jump in there? Yeah. Can't you smell set up all over that? No. Nope. My fault. That's the thing they've been doing though. They'll do like the trains in L.A. They'll drive the trains through the hood in L.A., leave the train cars open at night, yep. and leave it with shoes full. Yeah. My people, they've been doing this for years. For years, they did it in Dallas when I was a kid. Was that all you want to say? Mighty officer. Frustration. I can see it all over your face, man. The, the they don't have a combat mindset. They not vigilant. Come on. The book of First Peter, chapter 5 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary. So what we don't believe as a people is that we have an adversary. We do not believe that. We think we do not have to be prepared for battle. Because we think everybody loves us. And that's not what the Bible says. We got to have a combat mindset. We got to be vigilant. Let's go to this. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 3. Christ told us. Remember, Christ told us something. The book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 3. Yeah. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives... The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Yep. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. So he told you, he said, you got to take heed that nobody deceive you, nobody, can, nobody throw you off. Go ahead. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Mm -hmm. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. 
but the end is not yet. So it's going to be wars and rumors of wars. Go ahead. <coughs> For nation shall rise against nation mm -hmm. and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. So he says it's going to be earthquakes in different places. I think I told y'all this before. When I was a kid, right, it was no earthquakes in Texas. Now it's earthquakes in Texas all the time. They got this system called fracking where they take the oil out the land, put the water in. Now the land don't have the same stability that it had before because of fracking. They got earthquakes all over Texas now. Read that scripture again that you just read. Verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in the, ver in the diverse places. Yep. All these, these are the beginnings of sorrow. All of these are the beginnings of sorrows. Go ahead. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted. So then, so you got to understand, our own people are going to start delivering us up at some point. Come on. And shall kill you. And shall what? And shall kill you. And shall kill you. Go ahead. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So if the Lord is telling you, look, it's going to be people trying to kill you. The way you prepare for this battle is only to just pray and fast and have rice at home. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? Again, I'm not telling everybody to go out and get strapped up tomorrow. But it is important that we are prepared for all different types of uh, situations. You know what I'm saying? We have to be prepared to protect ourselves and to protect our family. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to take this off the wrong side. Did, am I good? Let me know, man, because I don't want, want y'all to... Oh like Christ no, said. What, like what you're saying about as far as when when this Corona thing hit, yep. everybody ran out and was buying everything off the shelves. Yep. But if you were prepared, you would have already had your pantry set up. Yep. You would already had your freezer set up. Yep. So that when you go to the store, all you're doing is buying normal. Let right. everybody else run around and be panicked. But you should be already set up. Yep. And I don't want to. And I don't want to sugarcoat this, right? Let me let me make sure I say it. Let me let me get the scripture. Let me get the scripture. Let's go to Nehemiah. Chapter 4, verse 17. So Christ said it's going to be people trying to kill us. Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 17. It's the book of Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 17. <laughs> yeah. They which build it on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, everyone with one of his hands wrought in the work. So everybody had one hand working. Go ahead. And with the other hand held a weapon. And the other hand, they was ready to fight. You know what I'm saying? They was prepared for the battle. So I'm not trying to sugarcoat this. I got to be honest. I'm saying that I want you all to be prepared for whatever different things might happen. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I just, I just got to say it plain. You know what I'm saying? If that means that you got to go out and get a certain type of thing, it would be a bow and arrow or a dang on bat or the, I don't know if a bat will work, but you know what I'm saying? You might need something. Go to the clip I sent you about uh, the watchman. The watchman. Go to that clip. Yeah, start at 140. Perfect. So this, so this show is called The Watchman, right? I don't know if uh, some of y'all watched it, but it was kind of loosely based off of uh, a family uh, or a specific man that has survived uh, the Tulsa riots of Oklahoma, right? And he kind of had some trauma behind that thing. Go ahead. Pause it, pause it. Did y'all sisters just see what happened? I'm turning to look at that video. Y'all sisters see what just happened. <laughs> y'all sisters. I want y'all to see what just happened. Go back like five seconds. I want y'all to pay attention to what just happened. It happened real quick. Hit that thing. Look how you see she 
grabbed that thing. She knew what she was doing. She didn't grab it and be like, oh, why you handing me this? <laughs> what is this for? <laughs> you got to prepare your family. You have to prepare your family. See, that sister right there was ready. Go ahead. I'm go. down in a tactical position. Watch her, watch her, watch her, watch her. Watch the sister, watch what she do. <laughs> See how she put it up? She was ready. She was like, everybody come over here. I know how to fire this thing. I know how to aim it. She got inside the sights. She was ready to go. Go ahead, and I. And that's, this brother's in the military, right? Yep. That is a bolt-action rifle. Not yes. everybody knows what to do with that thing. Yep. So that shows you that they were practicing this thing throughout. Mm. So what you're saying is that our families have to be prepared. I know if I was to give my throw my wife the shotgun, she would drop it like <laughs> she it was would a drop hot it like potato. it was a potato. <laughs> what is this? Look, sisters, y'all gotta be prepared. If it comes down to you protecting your family, what are you gonna do? You know what I'm saying? But again, in our minds, in our minds, we have really been trained to think a certain way about protecting ourselves. It's weird. It's like we think it's wrong for us to protect ourselves. We are afraid to protect ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, hit play on that thing. So it's just showing you pretty much how they moved through the city while there was a riot going on, and they kept their family safe. They was able to keep their family safe. Go ahead, J.D. You got something? Look like you got something. Look like you percolating. Over I feel like you was going there already, though. But uh, you good? Luke twenty two and thirty six. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Obadiah, it's your turn again. You back? Nah, I got it, man. Luke right. what? <laughs> Luke twenty two thirty six. <laughs> Damn. Luke twenty two. Thirty six. Thirty six. Welcome to the club. Yeah, you and that you and the Azariah and the Night Club. Azariah and the Night Club, man. Luke twenty two and thirty six. It says, "Uh, then said he unto them, but now he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his scrip, and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one." So that's Christ talking. Yep. Christ was telling the Israelites at the time. To get rid of your clothes, because your clothes ain't gonna help you, your extra money. Go get you a sword. Yeah. Go get your weapon to fight. Yeah. And if you realize when Christ was about to be taken, guess who had a sword? Peter did. Peter had a sword. He listened. He listened. He followed directions. But again, I again, see, this is scary to a Negro. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not again, I'm not saying that you have to have a weapon to go out and defeat America. But I'm saying that you do have to be able to protect yourself and protect your household. Go ahead, man. Yeah. I'm laughing at defeat because that's what the Negro think. That's they think what they got to go outside with their one gun <laughs> <laughs> and take on the white man. Nah, it's that if they come to you, yeah. that's what you're making reference to. You be ready to protect your family, protect your household. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And I'm saying this because even me, myself, I never thought that way. You know what I'm saying? Until I went on my, my travels here and there and I said, you know what? I got I to gotta make sure my wife is prepared. I got to make sure my children are prepared. What's the next one I got? Give me a, is it glory? Is that the next one? Give me glory. Watch this. Do that again. Here, give me your weapon. Give me your weapon. Do that again. What dime you can't do? Dime? Dime on each other. I want my money. Do it again. <laughs> go on, boy. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. on, boy. Go ahead, Shock. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a damn. That's a damn on each other. 
Good shot, Private. Thank you, sir. It's squirrel hunting. You ever killed a man? No, no, sir. Oh, you're handy with a gun. Y yes, sir. Reload. So he said he had been squirrel hunting. That's that's all he did. He was shooting squirrels. Now he in the military. Now he's getting prepared to go out to combat. It's a whole different thing than knowing how to shoot a gun and shoot a squirrel and to be prepared for combat. Hit that thing. Watch this. Faster. Faster. Faster! Discharge your weapon. Discharge your weapon. Do it! Now do it again. No. You see, that I ain't hear nothing get smashed, no glass break that time. He, he went in and out of his sights like three times when he was shooting that bottle and they was just, you know what I'm saying? But when he going fast, when you actually in combat, it's a whole different mindset you got to have. Come on. Only this time, I want it done quickly. A good man can fire three aim shots in a minute. He said a good man can fire three aimed shots in one minute. See, what we hate, what we hate a lot of times as Negroes is we hate standards. We, want, we don't want to determine what's good and bad or indifferent. You know what I'm saying? He just told you, you got to be able to get out three in a minute that's aimed that's a standard that's what we got we we have to be able to say okay am i prepared how do we prepare ourselves we have to put standards in place in order to prepare ourselves negroes hate standards man in case you didn't know negroes hate standards i'm trying to get over it on day of atonement you know what i'm saying but man our people man our people but he put he told you a good man gets off three shots in one minute. go ahead major forms Give me a Colt revolver. One. Your gun. Give it to me. Faster. Reload. Quickly. Faster. Faster. Load. Faster. Do it. <laughs> Drop the whole gun. Teach them properly, Major. Let's pause that thing. That's in. That's enough. But so, I, the point of this is that we gotta, we gotta understand. That we gotta hold ourselves to some type of standard, and we gotta push ourselves to make sure we prepare. You prepare yourself. By working towards a standard, you say, okay, this I did it this fast. Can I do it faster? I did it this fast. Can I do it faster next time? You know what I'm saying? That's how you prepare yourself. You don't prepare yourself by just doing whatever you want to do, how you want to do it. That is not preparation, Israel. That is not preparation if you don't set a goal and set a standard for yourself for whatever it is you're doing. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, 
These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.